G'day. Today we're going to try something uh, I haven't tried in the Robobrew 3, uh, and that's underletting of the water in the mash. Um, there's a few reasons people do this. Big breweries sometimes do it, it's just easier. Other people like to do it, they say it creates less dough balls. Um, anyway, there's a multitude of reasons why people do it. Now, I did sort of do it in the Robobrew 1 a few times. I'd fill the malt pipe up and I'd let it sort of sink down by itself into the uh, Robobrew that was full of water. So it's sort of the same thing. Uh, the difference with the Robobrew 1 is the bottom was solid on it, unlike the removable one in the Robobrew 3. Um, and I'd just let that sort of sink down in there by its own accord. Sometimes it'd help it a little bit. Um, and it used to work fine. The only thing I did notice a few times was uh, sometimes the malt would float up a bit in it. So I'd sort of grab it and wait and give it a stir a little bit at the top or something and help it along. The reason I haven't tried in the Robo Brew 3 before is because of the, that loose bottom. And I always thought, well, if the grain lifts up, what if the plate sort of comes up a little bit with it and the grain gets out and it gets all messy? Um, so today, anyway, I'm going to attempt it. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm going to start with my usual 18 litres of water because I've got about 4.6 something kilos of grain. Um, I was going to take it straight from the HLT and, and into the bottom of the Robo Brew 3, but I wanted to add my mashed salts. I didn't want to add it all to the whole HLT from my sparge water or anything. I only wanted it in the mash. So I'm going to separate 18 litres off, add the salts, and then add it to the Robo Brew 3. Now you could put it in a pot. Uh, you probably want something with a tap on it though. Um, I'm going to put it in my old Robo Brew. Uh, and it's just really using that as a storage vessel. Um, I might help heat it if the water loses a bit of temp or something, but uh, we'll see how we go. I'm not exactly sure how much temp I'm going to lose, whether I'm going to lose more temp or less temp. Um, I'm just sort of heading for a 66 degree mash for this brew, an amber ale. Uh, I'll probably record the rest of this brew for another video. Uh, it's sitting at 73 now, which is a little hotter than I wanted it. But uh, I wanted it about 71. But we might just run with it anyway. By the time I get the malt in, it might have cooled down a little bit. So anyway, put the malt in the pipe. Uh, I'm doing it all in the Robo Brew just because it's easier than picking up, doing it outside and putting it in full of grain. So just the usual, pour it in, but there's no water. So there you go, we're in, dry. So my water's up here. There's my mash tun, or the Robo Brew. Now there's several ways we could do this. Um, if I had a fitting or, or a hose, I could jam it in there probably. That would probably work. Or if I had a spare fitting, um, I could probably go through that. I think gravity will handle that, we'll soon find out. Otherwise I have a long hose down to the bottom tap and let it come up from the bottom. I've also thought about going through the centre pipe. There is a little bit of a gap where the two pipes join um, in the middle. Uh, so they'd be a little bit down the sides, but I don't think that would affect much. Uh, today, I'm going to try this. I haven't got any clamps. Hopefully it's going to be tight enough. I think I'm going to go with that. So there we go. Yeah, I can hear it going down there. Gravity's doing its thing. I don't know how fast we can go. I'm just going to go full at the start. If I see that grain floating up, I might slow it down. You can't see much from up there, so... I can hear things happening. Just can't see anything happening yet. This is wet condition grain. 
Uh, I did wet condition it yesterday and mill it yesterday though. Which I haven't done before. I usually do it straight before I use it. I know I'm going to have a little bit of dead space in the Robobrew, which I might have to just pick up and pour in at the end. But hopefully it should be enough to get up to the top here. I can hear it, I can see down the sides, it must be getting close to near the top of the grain. Should turn this off now actually. I don't want to I just turned the elements on the robo brew off on the one that was with my heating water just in case it goes dry you don't want to fry the elements although the safety switch should kick in but don't risk it so i've run out of water in the robo brew there might be a little bit more i can i'm going to be able to tip up oh no we're here look there we go. The water is there. Now if I go down, there's no dry patches. It comes up very nice and evenly. Of course you're going to want to make sure you've got good flow in your grain, but that looks pretty good. I'll go right there, try and bring some up. Oh, there is no dry patches. Of course, still give it a stir. I'm just going to tip up this and get the rest of this water in. But anyway, I'd say that is a success. This could get messy. It's going to be hot water coming out of here. Not much there. Oh, that went much better than expected. And I'll just tip up what's left in this. And there we go. That's perfect. So there we are. We are sitting a little bit lower than I wanted, but I haven't had the pump on yet. So once I turn the pump on, it might sort of settle out and go up to that 66. I haven't got the elements on, even though it says it's heating yet, just in case. Um, but I call that a success. So that, that worked really well, a lot better than I thought. Um, nothing went wrong, smooth as silk. Uh, this is for an amber ale brew. I will be uh, videoing the rest of the brew briefly, bits of it. Um, so keep an eye out for that video coming up. It'll take me a while to edit that one. So uh, probably in a week or two, and uh, you'll see that amber ale. Cheers.